Developing now, a 15-year-old girl shot and killed after a group of men opened fire in a neighborhood courtyard. We're live. Then new developments in the search for the missing Lynn University students and one father's tearful return from Haiti. Also, Super Bowl 44. The teams are set. It is Indianapolis against New Orleans. Now the final preparations are underway. And check out the celebration in New Orleans. This is a live look at Bourbon Street. Take a look at all those fans. And couldn't the rumors be true? Our Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie breaking up. Good evening. I'm Antonio Mora. And I'm Shannon Horry. CBS 4 News Tonight in High Definition starts right now. From Miami Dade, Broward, and the Keys, this is South Florida's CBS 4 News. Four men opened fire in Liberty City Courtyard tonight. A teenage girl was killed. Three others are in the hospital. Once again, that community is mourning the loss of another young life and searching not just for the men responsible, for also, but also how to make the violence stop. CBS 4's Tiffany Halbert joins us live from Liberty City with more on what happened there tonight. Tiffany. Antonio, investigators are still out here tonight interviewing witnesses and collecting evidence here at the scene, and neighbors tell us they are desperate for help. Tonight's shooting is just one of many that forces them to live in fear, not knowing when the next shots will ring out. Crime scene tape surrounds this Liberty City housing complex, and detectives mark bullet casings, an all-too-familiar scene here. We know every Sunday that somebody's going to get shot. This Sunday, it was a teenage girl and three others. Police say the girl was shot dead while hanging out in the center courtyard of this building. Investigators say four men sprayed the area with bullets, hitting four people. Three were rushed to the hospital, but for the teen, it was too late. In the back of my mind, you hope that it's not someone that you know. But, you know, there's always that feeling that, yeah, it is. Francina Holdman came to see if she knows the little girl who passed away. It's senseless um, to see kids get shot down. This shooting comes just one day after the one-year anniversary of another mass shooting in Liberty City that made national headlines. Back then, gunmen used assault rifles to kill two and injure seven others. To this day, that crime remains unsolved. What do I do as a mother who lives in a community where people tell me there aren't enough cops to protect my kid, keep them inside? Violence needs to stop, and truly it needs to stop because this is our future, and we're killing them, I mean, in an alarming, in a, at an alarming amount every, every single day. It's like something different is happening, you know. And as far as the other three people who were shot here tonight, we know that they were rushed to the hospital, one of them possibly in critical condition. And police tell us they don't have much of a description to go on. They know that the gunmen were driving a gray car, possibly an Altima or a Maxima. If you know anything, they want you to call them at Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. We're live in Liberty City. Tiffany Helberg, CBS 4 News tonight. Terrible to see history repeating itself and another young person gone, Tiffany. Thanks. And another family is mourning the loss of a South Florida teen tonight. 14-year-old Kara Catlin died last night in Oakland Park after a Broward Sheriff's deputy collided with the car she was in. Two other passengers, including Kara's stepsister and the deputy, were all taken to the hospital but are expected to be okay. Earlier tonight, Kara's friends gathered on the beach in Lauderdale-by-the-Sea to say goodbye. God has a reason for everything, but my only question is, what was the reason for this? Kara was the sweetest girl. BSO says they don't know who was at fault for the accident, and it's also unknown if the deputy was responding to a call at the time, but they say the deputy did not have his sirens or lights on. It's been a warm and windy weekend, but things could be changing for the work week. Very windy out there. CB Sports <laughs> Chief Meteorologist Dave Bernard joins us now with some rain possibly and cooler weather, huh? Yeah, looks that's how we're going to start the week off. We have a cold front tonight that's across the Florida Panhandle. Notice Pensacola right now only 58 degrees and just about the rest of the entire state well up into the 70s. It's warm tonight across South Florida, and I think it's going to stay that way through the evening hours. Most of the rain is across the Panhandle up into Georgia and South Carolina. We've had one or two little light showers here in South Florida tonight, but they really haven't amounted to all that much. By tomorrow afternoon, the cold front will be approaching South Florida. I think there'll be a pretty good line of showers ahead of it, so just about everybody will see some rain. I don't know if it's going to be really particularly that heavy, but it's definitely going to cloud up and it's going to get a little bit wet. But then by tomorrow night, the front sweeps on through and we have cooler air coming in. Tomorrow night could see 50s in South Florida and 40s across Central Florida, and that's going to set up, well, for a different change for the work week, and it looks like a cooler trend. Details on that in just a few minutes. 
Thank you, David. And two South Florida men are dead after the plane they were in crashed outside Chicago. Police in Sugar Grove, Illinois, say 37-year-old Gary Bradford from Hollywood and 32-year-old Drago Strahija of Lake Worth died in Saturday's crash. The plane had just taken off from the Aurora, Illinois airport, headed for Denver. Police say debris from the twin-engine plane hit a home's garage when the plane crashed. No one inside the home, though, was hurt. The latest now in an I-Team investigation. Thousands of cyclists rode through Key Biscayne today in honor of a fellow bicyclist who was killed. The memorial ride this morning was over Bear Cut Bridge. That is where 44-year-old Christoph Lacan was hit and killed last Sunday. Police say he was hit by a drunk driver. Carlos Bertinati is accused of leaving the scene of the crash, but police later arrested him. And the CBS4 I team uncovered Lacan lay in the street for 15 minutes before help finally got to him. The closest Miami-Dade fire station was closed due to budget cuts. So rescue crews came from 10 miles away. Now to the devastation in Haiti. Government officials say tonight they have buried more than 150,000 people. And that number doesn't include those still under the debris or killed outside the Port-au-Prince area. Meanwhile, makeshift tents, ca tent camps have popped up all over Haiti's capital. This morning, people gathered in a square near the presidential palace to pray. Although aid continues to pour into the country, many of the three million homeless and injured complain they still do not have enough to eat and drink. A new development tonight in the case of the missing Lynn University students. Friends of Courtney Hayes say her body was found in the rubble of the Hotel Montana in Port-au-Prince. The father of one of the other students, though Brittany Gengel, visited Haiti this weekend and returned to his hometown of Boston this afternoon. He said some families did find closure, but he did not. Our Brit is still missing. We're not sure where she is. But we are preparing ourselves for the worst and praying for a miracle. Eight students survived the earthquake. Four students and two faculty members from the university have been missing since the quake struck. Ten of the smallest earthquake victims have been recovering at Miami Children's Hospital. Today, doctors and family members let our cameras into the hospital to see their progress. The patients range in age from nine days old to 15 years old. Family members say they are grateful for the medical care. Okay. She will say thank you to all of them. After God, they were the one who saved her. Well, doctors say they had to use different strategies to treat patients in the operating room due to the severity and time also that elapsed since their injuries. And our website is a great resource for information on the devastation in Haiti. Look for the latest news from Port-au-Prince as well as slideshows and video. You can also donate to the relief effort right there through Neighbors for Neighbors. Find it at cbs4.com slash Haiti. A new audio tape reportedly from Osama bin Laden threatens more attacks against the U.S. In the message, bin Laden takes credit for the failed bombing attempt on a plane on Christmas Day. He praises the suspect, Umar al-Farouk Abdulmutallab, as a hero. U.S. officials say they have not yet authenticated the tape, but that there is no proof that bin Laden had anything to do with that terror attempt on Christmas. Starting tomorrow, eco-friendly commuters in South Florida can save some green by taking the bus. The pair of new hybrid buses will take passengers from Miami-Dade County into Broward County and back using the new I-95 express lanes. This week, those buses will be free, but starting February 1st, expect to pay $2.35 for the trip. The buses will operate three hours in the morning and evening every day during the work week. Well, Super Bowl 44 <laughs> is set. It will be the Indianapolis Colts versus the New Orleans Saints right here in South Florida. The Saints just clinched their spot in the big game about a half an hour ago, and they are still celebrating in the streets of New Orleans. You're mm -hmm. looking live at the famous Bourbon Street. CBS 4's Prince Rufapat joins us now with more on the two teams in the big game, and the second game was a doozy. It really that. was. I tell you, I've been to Bourbon Street, too, and it is crazy there. So I'm sure on a normal day. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'm sure they're having fun. Well, we 
We are just two weeks away from the big day and come February 7th, Sun Life Stadium will play host to Super Bowl 44 and it will be the Colts fourth Super Bowl appearance and the first for the Saints. Now earlier today in Indianapolis AFC Championship game, Peyton Manning leads his team to victory, but Mark Sanchez and the Jets come out attacking and would jump out to an 11 point lead. The Colts would then turn on the heat though. They score 17 unanswered points in the second half. So the Colts go on to beat the Jets 30 to 17. Now, meanwhile, over in the Big Easy, the Superdome, for Saints will see the Vikings in the in NFC this city, Championship this stadium game. This, used goes, to this game does not disappoint both teams with a high-powered offense. So the game would be tied at the half and at the end of regulation. This game goes into overtime, and Garrett Hartley nails a 40-yard game-winning field goal. So the Saints go on to beat the Vikings 31 to 28. Right now, the Colts and Saints are riding on cloud nine, but there is still one more game to be played. For everybody in this city, this stadium used to have holes in it. It used to be wet. It's not wet anymore. This is for the city of New Orleans. Very humble this week. I thought we just kept our mouths shut and just went to work for this week and uh, came out and won this game. And um, uh, we're just hoping for no rain in Miami this time. No rain. <laughs> yes, hopefully not. Well, the last time the Colts won a Super Bowl was right here in South Florida in Super Bowl 41. As for New Orleans, the Saints will make their first Super Bowl appearance. Should be pretty exciting. Prim Sarupa Pat, CBS 4 Sports. I thank you, Prim. It'll be a great matchup. Oh, it's going to be exciting. And being the home for the big game means South Florida has all sorts of things to do to prepare for the Super Bowl. We have a lot to do. CBS 4's <laughs> Gio Benitez is live at a t-shirt company in Fort Lauderdale where they are already churning out championship shirts tonight, Gio. They're getting started right away. Right away, Shannon. Here it is, the official shirt for Super Bowl 44. Colors look good, everything looks good. Just concentrating on printing the shirts, right? <laughs> Barry Stewart has been printing t-shirts for more than 30 years. Tonight, he's making some very special ones, and everybody wants them. My mom, my girl, everybody. <laughs> Barry and his machines are going into overtime, getting the Super Bowl 44 shirts off the presses and onto store shelves. And it's really fly. It's just go, go, go. They call it if then. If they win, then you print. Adam Cohen of Atlas Embroidery in Fort Lauderdale is printing the official NFL shirts. These were all the different combinations possible, even before kickoff. But as some teams lose, designs are quickly eliminated. Sorry, all the Jets fans, and that's never going to get produced. That's going to go right back to Reebok. But for those that make the cut. So those, like I said, they'll be on the shelves ready for retail literally tomorrow morning when everybody's waking up. How early? Try 6 a.m. Hey, by 6 a.m. when people start getting these in their hands over at the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach airports, yeah, I know they're going to like what they say. You guys saw the quality of what's coming out of the back there. So let the Super Bowl frenzy begin, and you can watch it all happen right here on CBS4, your official Super Bowl station. We're live right now in Fort Lauderdale. I'm Gio Benitez, CBS4 News. Thanks, Gio. And stay with CBS4 News and CBS4.com for complete coverage of Super Bowl 44. And, of course, you can watch the big game right here on CBS4 on February 7th. So, uh, how do you like uh, our new home? Coming up, <laughs> we'll show you how our new set was built and what it takes to go HD. Also ahead, could Hollywood's most famous couple be breaking up? The latest on Brad and Angelina, next. I'm Kim Bo Camper, coming your way tonight on Sports Wrap. Peyton Manning is packing his bags for a refer return trip to South Florida in search of more super glory. He will get to face his hometown New Orleans Saints, who will be making their first visit to the Super Bowl. We've got the highlights, plus we catch up with Alonzo Mourning and Dwayne Wade, who are leading a remarkable relief effort in Haiti. The wrap begins right after the news. You're watching CBS 4 News tonight in HD, covering Margate, Miami Lakes, Key West, and your South Florida neighborhood. We'll be right back. As you've probably noticed by now, we are reporting tonight from a brand new set and we're coming to you in a much clearer picture. As of tonight, CBS 4 News is broadcasting in high definition. And with that big technical upgrade, we're also unveiling a whole new look. CBS 4's David Sutta shows you how it all came together. Medium of tomorrow. Since 1967, CBS 4 has been serving South Florida. 
Our look has changed many times, but never as dramatic as today. Behind the scenes over the past six months, we've been building a new and improved station. High definition, a new studio, and a whole new look. Our graphics department is debuting a brand new logo for CBS4, the first in 10 years. We wanted to really keep that, that South Florida feel. And um, even though, you know, we, we're going to miss some of these colors, we've kept some of them and sort of simplified it where it's, it's just clearer. Clearer is key because you are now about to see our news in high definition, clear widescreen video that will show you every detail of your news. I think uh, the quality of the video is impressive. CBS4's director of operations, Marcelo Sanchez, has overseen 22,000 feet of cable run through our station. The installation of seven high definition cameras and a new control room switcher. And his team did all of this in just two months. Are you like a proud father? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's my baby. Marcelo will be in the studio the first time we broadcast news in high definition on our brand new set. Yes, two weeks ago, we started tearing down the old one. 1,400 square feet of big screens and backdrops. It took us six days to wipe out the old and bring in the new. Our staff installed a new video screen on the west side of the studio, then a new plasma section on the east side. In between was my contribution to CBS4, a gorgeous backdrop of downtown Miami. That's me snapping away from the Venetian Causeway just after 6 a.m. We merged five photos together to form a landscape that you could blow up the size of a billboard and not lose any quality. The final product is a whopping 17 feet long. Tomorrow in our true view, warm and breezy, sun and clouds. With the final pieces installed, we didn't have time to take a break and admire her beauty. It was time to practice. We're starting off mild later on, warm with a mix of sun and clouds and breezy. The new studio logos in high definition is not only new to you, you, but to us as well. Florida. High Travel definition changes everything. Track 32 effect up. Our technical staff spent the past week rehearsing. Shannon and Antonio, Erica and Elliot, Cynthia and Jim spent hours retelling us the news after telling you from our temporary set. Right now at five, powerful aftershock. After a week of broadcast you never saw, we are ready. A new studio in high definition with a brand new look. And we are just getting started. Our weather department is next to go high definition. And soon after that, you'll see our crews in the field from your community broadcasting in high definition. From our brand new high definition studios, I'm David Sutta, CBS4 News. And as David mentioned, a week of broadcasts that you all never saw that we had to do for rehearsals. But what we did was nothing compared to the amount of technical work that went on behind oh the scenes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so <laughs> much wiring and stuff. <laughs> never realized how much <laughs> we had here, right? We hope it looks good to yes. uh, everyone out there. Yeah. Chief Meteorologist Dave Bernard is joining us, and lots of wind out there tonight, David. I'll huh? tell you, all day we had the wind. It has not let up tonight, and it is balmy outside. 77 degrees right now, all the way from Broward County right to the lower keys, and the stickiness factor is a five. That's fairly sticky for late January. 82% humidity, and there are the winds southeast at 14, but gusting right now to 28, and in some cases, even higher than that. All right, here's a look at the rest of the wind speeds. We'll start in Lauder Hill. We can see a wind gust there up to 30 miles per hour today, where currently it's at 75. And area-wide, everybody's blowing out of the south and southeast right now. Again, mainly sustained around 15 or 16 miles per hour. But check out the wind gust. For instance, at Fort Lauderdale, we're gusting to 32, 24 in West Kendall and Opelika right now. Wind gust up to 26 miles per hour. All ahead of this cold front that's over the panhandle. That approaches the area tomorrow. So a couple of things. More clouds and a better rain chance tomorrow in our true view. After the showers move in, it's warm and breezy and then tomorrow night the front moves on through the rest of the week looks fantastic a cooler breeze on Tuesday and lots of bright sunshine this area of high pressure moves across this Tuesday night and Wednesday morning that means a chilly start maybe in the 40s for some of us on Wednesday morning with pleasant sun in the afternoon and then as the high moves out into the Atlantic for late in the week we'll begin a little bit of a warming trend so a little warmer for Thursday Friday with sun and clouds and then looking ahead to next weekend another front could be approaching South Florida so we'll say a warm breeze and it looks like a shower chance at least can up on Saturday and also maybe on Sunday. Here's our forecast for the rest of tonight. I'll call it a balmy breeze. There could be a brief shower blowing by, but it'll be quick. 
The low, only 74, so very warm. Then for tomorrow, 80, showers likely, warm and breezy, likely going to see a lot of cloud cover, and then we'll begin to clear out tomorrow night once the front moves through. Small craft advise you for strong winds southwest tomorrow morning, northwest by tomorrow evening. Seas up to 8 feet in the Gulf Stream, and the bays are going to be choppy. So here's the work week. Near 80 tomorrow, showers likely. Look at the rest of the week, a cooler breeze. 72 on Tuesday, 74 on Wednesday. There you can see some folks could be in the upper 40s by Wednesday morning. Then lots of sun on Thursday and then a little bit warmer sun by the time we go to Friday with a high of 80 degrees. So after tomorrow, looks like a great week to maybe take it off if you can. <laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, you know like what David's to. Yeah, I off? know. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> Next in sports, more from today's championship Sunday in the NFL. Including the highlights side. from Peyton Manning's oh, comeback win Peyton over the Jets. From Sarissa Sat with Sports here will come February 7th. Peyton Manning and the Colts will be right here in South Florida alongside Drew Brees and the Saints for Super Bowl 44. So earlier today, the AFC Championship game in Indianapolis. It is a showdown between Peyton and the rookie Jets, Mark Sanchez. First half, second quarter, Sanchez goes long. He's going to hook up with Braylon Edwards for an 80-yard bomb, make it 7-3 Jets, and they just keep attacking. Sanchez is going to get pounded, but somehow he manages to get it to Dustin Keller for a nine-yard score. 14-6, gang green, but don't celebrate too soon. Colts on the comeback. Manning finds a wide-open Austin Collie in the end zone. Indy cuts an 11-point deficit to just four at the half. And then after the break, the former Super Bowl MVP finds Pierre Garçon for a four-yard touchdown. Indy is now on top, 20-17. to Rex Ryan cannot believe it. Payton is going to want to put this away, so he hits Dallas Clark for a 15-yard strike. That puts the Colts up by 10. Indy wins 30-17, to advancing to their fourth Super Bowl in franchise history, which I run Ironically, have all been played in Miami. Peyton had um, just an outstanding game. I mean, he's one of those guys that can adjust to different situations, and once he got a bead on him, he handled things extremely well, uh, threw it well, managed the clock extremely well, a real champion. Meanwhile, over in the Big Easy, the NFC Championship game does not disappoint. And right now, I can tell you, Bourbon Street is packed with all sorts of people partying. 40-year-old Brett Favre hoping his experience will outdo Drew Brees and the Saints. First quarter, Favre hits Sidney Rice for a five-yard score. Vikings up 14-7. Second quarter, well, here come the Saints. Devery Henderson dances his way into the end zone. He makes a catch for a nine-yard touchdown reception. We are all tied up 14-14 at the half. After the break, fast forward to the fourth breeze finds Reggie Bush for a five-yard score. So Saints now have the lead, 28-21. Hold on, game's not over. Vikings tie it up on a two-yard touchdown run by Adrian Peterson. And then with 30 seconds to go in regulation, Vikings trying to get within field goal range. Favre is intercepted by Tracy Porter. Minnesota had their chances, I tell you. So we are headed into overtime, and it comes down to a 40-yard field goal, and Garrett Harley is going to nail it. So the Saints go on to beat the Vikings in overtime, 31-28, to and they are headed to their first ever Super Bowl. I'm speechless right now. It's, uh, it's a moment that I've been waiting for for a long time, and obviously the job's not done yet, but we're going to enjoy this victory. And how about these fans, huh? They're great. We got the best fans in the world. Best fans in the world, the Houdat Nation. Now we got to finish strong in Miami, baby. Finish strong in Miami. So where can you watch Super Bowl 44? Well, right here on CBS 4, of course. The Colts will play the Saints on Sunday, February 7th. Kickoff is set for 6, so tune in right here for all your Super Bowl coverage leading up to the big day. Antonio and Shannon, should be a busy two weeks for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding about that. It's going to be busy and a lot of fun, and too. And it should be a great game. Thank you, Fram. And coming up, President Obama gets called for jury duty. And why layoffs at a popular warehouse store could mean free food for shoppers. Next. President Barack Obama will be skipping jury duty. The president was summoned in Illinois starting tomorrow, but a White House official says the president has alerted the court he won't be able to make it. He does have a busy week ahead with a State of the Union speech set for Wednesday. In news for your money, more than 11,000 workers from Sam's Club warehouse stores lost their jobs today. The company, which is run by Walmart, said the cuts will span all of its 600 stores. Most of the cuts are in the demonstration department. Sam's Club has also hired an outside company to better market its fresh food, which will mean more free food samples for you. Could Brangelina soon be a thing of the past? Rumors are swirling that the Hollywood superstars 
are splitting up. A British tabloid reported Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie have already secretly signed legal papers splitting up their assets and giving them joint custody of their six children. But several U.S. magazines report those rumors are not true. Brad and Angelina have not been seen together at recent events lately, including the Golden Globes and the Hope for Haiti telethon. CBS 4 News Tonight is coming right back.